The Turnbull government is deep in debt and desperately trying to make savings to our huge welfare bill. I mean, it's now $165 billion a year and increasing. So, with the help of some crossbench senators, it's frozen for two years, increases to the family tax benefits. And it's going to use those savings for yet more welfare, childcare. Now, that's not really saving much then, but these cuts were still too cruel for Senator Jackie Lambie, who for years lived on benefits. We do it not because we want to, but because circumstances put us there. And for you to take more money off those people, you have no idea how bloody tough it is. Every little cent counts to those people. What you are doing is shameful. And if you really realise the damage that you are continually doing to that part of society, you would stop doing it. Joining me is the panel, Bruce Hawker, former Labor campaign guru, and Parnell McGuinness, writer and director of uh, communications agency Thought Broker. Uh, thank you to you both. But, uh, Parnell, what did you make of that plea? Oh, gosh, that was an emotional plea, wasn't it? It's one of the great problems in any social safety net society is that it's very hard to know who deserves the benefit and who's just taking the mickey. So, I mean, this, um, this play from Jackie, I have a lot of sympathy for her. You just don't know. And a lot of the time, the benefits get handed out and, and we have to assume the worst. Now, what we're seeing, though, of course, is that people start to regard that as an entitlement and, in fact, start to regard not taking advantage of that as somehow being the patsy. So, they're the patsy instead yes. of us paying it. So it's, it's, a, it's a concern and it's definitely something we need to be looking at from a moral perspective, more even than a financial perspective. But, Bruce, the whole point is, of course, money's running out. That's one. And the other thing here is, and I'm hesitant to say it because it'll seem really mean, because that was powerful and I do accept that when you're, when you're you know, poor, those dollars count, every, every cent. But Lambie there was saying she was on benefits because circumstances put her there, circumstances... But she was actually on disability pension because of an injury she got from the army, she says. But she was also a single parent who, while on benefits, abused drink and drugs, painkillers, according to her own account, and sometimes just didn't get out of bed. I mean, there's a problem, isn't there, that being on welfare might not just be the result of circumstances, but decisions people make. Uh, well, I think the circumstances generally land people on welfare and in those sort of situations, Andrew, but it's a question of what you do when you're there and how you manage, uh, you know, whether it's the pain that you're suffering as a result of being on disability allowance or just the, the trauma of unemployment or, or whatever, that really comes into play. So, uh, I don't think you can be too prescriptive about uh, any uh, anyone who's on welfare benefits. And, and let's face it, it's not a lot of money. It's not a lot of money. The disability benefit is $880 a fortnight. Uh, New Start is $500 a fortnight. Now, it's not a lot of money. And, uh, and I think, yes, you do need to make sure that there aren't people there abusing it. And you don't want it to become a permanent crutch for people so that you go from one generation to the next who's dependent on welfare. But you do need to recognise that there are a lot of people who desperately need that and that there are countries where we don't have welfare, where we create a lot of other... where they create a lot of other problems with, uh, with violence and, you know, basically two different people living in the one country. You see that in the United States all the time and it's a, it's a pretty ugly sight. So we should be careful about what we wish for here. Uh, I really do think Except, that. of course, someone else, someone else who does go to work and probably is, you know, struggling to save and all that, is paying the taxes that provide for this. So this is the problem. Yes. But, uh, Parnell, it's really showing, isn't it, when you get appeals like that, and that would have, a lot of people would think, you know, they really get that, that appeal, how hard it is for the government to cut spending. I mean, even this childcare pa package, for, for instance, is handing out money to people on 350000 <laughs> a year still. <laughs> 
Well, which means that, you know, a people... A, a, essentially, that childcare cut is only going to be cut from less than 1% of households in Australia. I mean, it's ridiculous, really, isn't it? It's just a slap over the wrist to wealthy people for being wealthy without any dividend to the budget bottom line. So it's real class warfare, almost, that the government is performing against the people who are contributing most to, to society. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I, look, yeah, I, I, I tend to agree to some extent uh, with what Parnell's said there. I mean, it, it is a, a real, very significant issue. But, you know, the people who are making these decisions also have to make sure that they're not abusing the system. There was this uh, uh, Minister Michael McCormack today. It's been revealed that he received $50,000 in taxpayers' money over three years to stay in his wife's investment property in Canberra. No wonder people are so unhappy with the way in which, you know, politicians operate in this country. On the one hand, they say, you've got to go out there and cut, cut, cut and make sure you can live on less and we're going to deprive you of all these benefits. And yet, they're... with the other hand, they're dipping into the taxpayers' pocket themselves. You know, it's, it's nothing short of hypocrisy, Andrew, and... And we've got to address oh, no, no, that no, issue no, as well. Not denying that. Mm. Not denying that. In the case of the deputy yes, of ex deputy speaker in Vic the Victorian Parliament, who was Indeed. charging taxpayers huh. uh, an extra second home allowance, who was actually living in a caravan just for the caravan down the beach. I mean, and he's not paying that back. Parnell um, can't get away from this London uh, business. Uh, a lot of people will be asking. In fact, uh, I saw One Nation leader uh, Pauline Hanson today saying ban. Muslim immigration. And even now, I'm finding it very difficult to wonder how you could not at least severely restrict it, given the danger people are in. What sort of danger... Where are we up to in this debate? Particularly the Europeans, with their huge migrant, immigrant uh, populations now from the third world and the Muslim third world. Well, arguably, we're far too late in this debate to have much of a difference one way or another. So there, the influx of migrants over the last couple of years has been enormous. But even before that, the number of immigrants, unassimilated immigrants, living in Europe, across Europe, is enormous. So you might have seen overnight President Erdogan has started doubling down on his threatening the talk Turkish against president. Europe. The Turkish president. Yes, thank you, sorry. And he has said to... He has warned Europeans, he said to them, that they shouldn't feel safe walking the streets of Europe anymore. It's a very serious threat, given that there are something like 7 or even 8 million Turks now living across Europe, and many of them feeling more affiliated to Turkey than they do to the countries in which, which are hosting them. So, to get back to the welfare debate, in fact, a lot of the problem comes here from the fact that they're leaving their home country of Turkey because it's not offering them opportunities, but then taking the opportunities of the welfare state in the countries that they're going to and feeling disenfranchised because they're getting entitlements which don't allow them to rise up in status. So Erdogan has come in and said, you are being discriminated against, that's why you don't have the status, and this is like honey to their ears. It's a terrible Good. situation. Well, it's preaching also to a victim culture that is very strong in uh, yeah. parts of the Middle East. But, Bruce, you know, Labor, I think, has been really shy of even getting into this debate. It's demonised even having the debate. And I wonder whether they're just getting left behind. Like, in, in Britain, I've seen, you know, the left-wing uh, Prospect magazine, when uh, David Goodhart was editor, was talking about what pa and Parnell was suggesting, that the welfare state, the support for the welfare state was being broken down because it relied on people thinking, I'll pitch in if those people also pitch in. And now they're seeing people come in that don't. Should Labor get serious about the limits of multiculturalism for a start? Well, I don't think it's only uh, immigrants who don't necessarily pitch in. I mean, I think you see a, a lot of that uh, around, around Australia anyway. I mean, it's, it's not a problem that's unique to, to immigrants. Um, I, look, I don't think Labor has really got too much to gain from going, you know, as Parnell said, doubling down on these sorts of debates because they're always going to be outdone by the conservative side of politics if they try to do that. And uh, I don't think that provides them with any sort of uh, real incentive to do it. And, and frankly, you know, the problems are often much more complex than are being presented, uh, you know, to us. I mean, for example, uh, you know, that terrible uh, tragedy when, uh, when, when homegrown terrorists uh, blew up 
buses and, and trains in, uh, and, and, and just killed people in London, uh, you know, a decade or more ago. Well, they were. That's just what they were. They were homegrown terrorists. They were Muslims, but they were homegrown. Yeah, they're you from know? unassimilated no, you've, families. You've, you've got to make sure... What Correct. We, what we, and that's what no, we have to be doing. Isn't what Panel but, just said, the counter-argument to this, this is what I'm saying, the limits of multiculturalism and this blind faith that in time everyone would integrate... What you just said is exactly the problem that you are seeing when the second and third generations remain assimilated, alienated, angry and dangerous, Parnell. Isn't that well, exactly the but, problem? But hang on, what you have to do is start asking yourself why is it that they feel like that? You know, we don't care about why anymore. I don't care about why. I don't well, want to be should, blown I, up. I, I you should worry about why because it'll continue to happen. You because shouldn't. these people are often Australian citizens or or American citizens or British citizens. They're not people you can deport. Yeah. They're not people you can deport, <laughs> Andrew. You've got to yes, deal with the problem. Look, they, are, they are absolutely unassimilated because they are refusing to, as, to assimilate. So why, though? Because, why are they refusing to assimilate? There, because there is a culture that has <laughs> been built up in these areas of come in and take what is given to you by the state, and that is your entitlement, your absolute right, and you do not have to give anything in return. Well, now, just Australia a has managed you're just to You're just having a crack Jackie Lambie about okay. that, and she's home. Go. Australian. It's not unique we to need these another people. Hour. We it's need not another unique hour. to Come migrants. back next week. Come back <laughs> next week. Bruce Hawker, Parnell McGuinness, thank you so much for your time. I should say, too, that Bruce is now Head of Campaigns and Communications Group. But hang on, because we've got David Spears up next and uh, from